Moderation helps everyone feel safe. And it's locked. Why are you telling me that now after we're already left? It's not going. It's not going? Hold on. People. There's six people. Six people. But I hey, can't everybody. see. You can't see. It's not showing up. Oh. Try it again. I did try it again. We haven't done this for like two years, so <laughs> we're trying to figure it out as we go. It says live and it's not working. Oh, oh. There we go. I got it. All right. Oh, it's like that. Hold on. Let me open it. Go live. Okay, so it's a little bit delayed. But can you see the chat? Yes, I can see the chat. Hey, everybody. It's been a long time since we've done this. Uh, I'm excited to chat with you all. You should wait until more people come. We're going to wait until more people come. Whose genius idea was that? Whose genius idea was what? To wait. To wait? Yeah. It was yours. Oh. Yeah. If you're having any issues with audio, um, just turn up your volume. Okay. People are saying hello. Hi from Scottsdale. Scottsdale. Scan fan. Okay. Hello from Chile. Oh, hello. Hello, Chile. So uh, it's been sort of a complicated month uh, in terms of some client work and then Lucy has joined her school's flag football team, and I've been producing videos of the games, and that has sort of slowed down some of my other production, and I just could not get a video pulled together for this week. So uh, I hope you're all okay with a little live chat. We haven't done this for a while, and um, it'll be great to hear from uh, any of you who can tune in this evening or morning if you're in Australia. We have someone saying, I'm tuning in from the Oregon coast via Starlink. Oh, Hopefully nice. this is more entertaining than watching the rain come down on the trees. Oh, I love a rainy day at the coast. I mean, I love any day on the Oregon coast, honestly. We have a, oh, a hello from Eugene from a Renee Parker. Hello, Renee. We have a welcome to Donald and Lucy's fireside chat. Fireside. If only I had built a fire. So oh, yeah. Lucy is going to read the, the chat for me so that way I don't have to like put on my glasses and squint at... I can't squint at my phone because that's what's recording us right now. Someone said volume really low, but someone else said loud and clear, so... Okay, if your audio, phone, if you're having any issues with the audio, and that's been my experience with the live streams, is that the audio is not great, just turn up the volume on your device and just for this thing. And then when you watch another video, you can turn it back down. Do you know Out and Back Oregon? I know Out and Back Oregon. Okay, that's who's saying all of this. Oh, it's shy. He's just being a jerk. He said, build the fire with small wood. <laughs> right. Hey, shy. Haven't seen you in a while. Okay. Uh, someone said, hello from Hillsboro. Hillsboro. We were in Hillsboro. We were in Hillsboro. Lucy got her prom dress in Hillsboro. Yes, I did. Uh, this hi. is serious overlanding content. We've got flag football. Mm -hmm. We've got, got prom, prom dresses. Prom dress shopping. <laughs> yep. Uh, we have a from Delaware. Delaware. Thanks for tuning in. Oh, wait, I missed one earlier. We yeah. have a Western Australia. Western Australia. So that's a picture of that so that's like the perth side so it's like nine o'clock in western australia thanks for tuning in so many comments um east coast australia oh that's um the aussies like us it means it's later it would be later there so be later. <gasps> not as early staying up too late no it's morning it's daytime over there it's okay. sunday it's sunday morning in australia nine. oh right 9 a.m because it's flipped it's sunday morning because they're upside there. down because yeah. oops upside down <laughs> Um, let's see. Someone said five by five. Five by five. By an introverted outlander. Oh, introverted outlander. Do you yes. know this person? Yeah, I recognize okay. that name. 
We have someone that said hello from the guy that met you at a gas station in Bandon a few months ago. Oh, how you doing? Thanks for tuning in. I do remember meeting you. Um, okay. Survive today said I'm getting getting ready to lift my Tacoma with Bilstein 5,100. 5,100, Bilstein 5,100, yeah, yeah. And love to hear thoughts about all dogs off-road experience. Well, I mean, I've been super, super happy with all dogs. They're very, um, they're not like focused on selling stuff. They're focused on getting you set up with what makes sense for you. Even if that means what makes sense for you is less sales for them. They've just been fantastic to work with. They're super nice people. And um, I trust them completely with their expertise in terms of the suspension of the various rigs. I mean, obviously they're very Nissan oriented, but they do a lot of work on um, Toyotas and other vehicles as well. And they know suspension. So all dogs, if, if all dogs has the gear that will fit on your rig, I would 100% work with them. Um, yeah, fantastic guys. Oh, sorry. Okay, real quick, we have a hi from Ontario. We have a hello, Ontario. hello from O'Hare Airport. O'Hare Airport in Chicago. We have a Klamath Falls. We have a Vermont. We have Hello, a Flagstaff. We have a Florida. Wow. We have a, that might be it. Um, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, oh yes, the person from Flagstaff said they chatted with you at Expo a few years ago. Oh yeah, at Expo West, um, I assume. Probably not gonna make it down there this year. We'll be at Expo PNW as usual this year. Someone said, thanks for the stickers. Have one of my RAM or have one on my RAM and I'm going to put the other on my travel trailer. Nice. That is a Darren. I don't know if you know Darren. Darren. I keep forgetting to say the names of the people. Yeah. Um, let's see. Someone said, Lucy, have you gotten to drive that old truck yet? No. Because? It's broken. Okay, well, if it wasn't broken, <laughs> can you drive a stick? No. No. I'm just a little blonde girl. But in her defense, she hasn't had an opportunity to learn to drive that truck because it's broken. it is broken down and I'm working on it. I'm trying to get it figured out myself and I'm not a mechanic. So um, maybe tomorrow I'll work on that some more. Okay, let's see. These people have incorrect grammar. <laughs> yeah, because your grammar is... <laughs> uh, when are you and Jason doing another off-road trip? Um, well, you know, I avoid going out with Jason as much as possible, and I hope he sees that. Um, generally, we do our, our one trip each year in the fall. Um, I am going to um, hang out with Jason a little bit next weekend or this coming weekend but when we'll be doing any like actual travel, just sort of camping. Um, and then other than that, it just depends on if, you know, sometimes we just plan stuff at the last minute, but for sure we will be out next, you know, late October, early November to try again to continue working on the route that we've been working on. Okay. Davison Clay says, curious if you're heading North Washington or the Cascades this year. Um, I don't know. I may, so each year I meet up with my cousins and last year we um, camped sort of outside of Leavenworth and I was blown away. I mean, blown away by the mountains up there in Washington. And I need to get back up there, and it may be that for my cousin's camp out this year, we may be back in Washington, up in that area, and if so, I'm hoping that I can tack a little extra time on to explore more of that area, because um, that was just some unbelievably dramatic mountains. I mean, even compared to Colorado's mountains, uh, I was just 
I was blown away by Washington. I need to spend more time up there. I'll get up there. Someone said, I'm debating, wait, I should stop saying someone, sorry. Introverted Outlander, which we already talked about. I'm debating whether I should go to Expo West or just do PNW like last year. Um, well, you know, I don't know if you've been to West or not. Um, obviously that used to be sort of the flagship expo in Flagstaff. I feel like PNW is sort of like competing for top spot in the Overland Expos. The advantage of Overland Expo PNW is that you're out there on the grass. They did move it up a little bit earlier this year, so hopefully less hot than last year. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm not going to be at West. I will be at PNW. Uh, it's just such a really nice uh, venue for the event that, to me, that's the having been to. West and PNW and Mountain West, you know, I may be biased, but PNW is definitely my favorite. That kind of answers another question. Someone said, will you be at a booth at PNW Expo this year? At PNW Expo, yes. I will be at the All Dogs Off-Road booth. Um, and I don't know yet, of course, which booth that will be, but um, me and the truck will be wherever All Dogs Off-Road is. Someone said, stop it, Lucy. Scan fan. I'm not, do you know who that is? No. Just say. Scanfan said manual transmission equals Gen Z theft presentation device. Yeah. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah, neither of my kids know how to drive um, manual transmission. My son Colin, he's very interested in learning once I get the truck running. Lucy has been less enthusiastic about it, um, to my surprise. But I, I, I think that everyone should know how to drive a manual transmission. You just never know when you might need one. Albert Two says, I like Donald's humor. You should like mine more. <laughs> um, anyways. Uh, Chris, sorry. Chris Sanderson okay. said, do you ever come up to BC Canada? I have not. Um, I mean, that's definitely, I've seen some just amazing, I guess, photos and videos from the British Columbia and um, I think currently my passport is expired, so that's something that I need to get taken care of before I do any international travel. But one day I'll get up there. Okay, I lost one spot. Um, Annie Summer, so Lost in MT says, any summertime plans to make Montana or Northern Idaho this year? Um, no, not this year. I do have a friend who, um, is has been working the past couple of years at um, Glacier National Park and I was actually I was going to go up this year and meet up with them up there and then a few things sort of went wrong I'm hoping next year um, possibly in like May to get up into uh, Montana see my buddy up there and then do some other exploring up in Montana Okay, Introverted Outlander says, I think it's supposed to say I did Western, it says Weston, but it must be Western. I don't know if Weston is anything. What was the question? I did West, it says Weston, but I'm assuming it says Western 2021. Okay. Oh, West, maybe he's Western. talking about Expos. Expo, the yeah. experience was not good. Oh, at Expo West, yeah. Um. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, I'm, well, some people are asking like the same questions, so. Okay. Let's where I'm well, losing you can, my you can, spot. You can you can read them if it's something that I've already answered. I'll just I'll just I say. I guess. But... Um, well, someone said I've really enjoyed your channel, Donald. Watching from Australia. Thank you. Um, someone said, "What Overland YouTube channels do you follow?" I don't know if that's. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. Um, I've, I watch almost no YouTube anymore these days. I used to watch a ton of it and I sort of veered away from it. Um, I do watch Jason's channel and um, I watch Venture Forward, Chris Schantz uh, with the Orange Jeep. Um, he was one of my earliest channels that I started following and I've continued to follow him. I watch um, SUV RVing. He's sort of, you know, he's not as much like off-roady overlanding, um, but he just, he travels to, he finds really great places. He does 
hikes and climbs that I wouldn't do and um, I just really like the style of his videos. Those are probably the two that I watch the most religiously, venture forward and SUV RVing. And those are both kind of being a little bit different from, from my channel. The stuff is very similar to my channel. For the most part, I don't watch because I spend a lot of time filming and editing that same kind of content, so. Introverted Outlander says, I also went to, I don't know if I'm saying this wrong, but Leavenworth? Leavenworth. Leavenworth mm -hmm. for Overland Rally last year, and I really liked that event. It seemed to be more geared towards community than a trade show. Yeah, and I keep wanting to get to Northwest um, Overland Rally, and I just always end up having a conflict of some sort, and I'm not going to get there this year either. Um, George KC1TQF okay. says, ever think of traveling to the Northeast? Oh, I mean, I would love to get to the Northeast, the Southeast, the middle, every I, all the way around the country, really, and even up into sort of Eastern Canada. I've seen some amazing places up there. Um, those are long, long trips. Um, currently, the you know, it's difficult for me to be gone for more than about a week at a time. Lucy is about to graduate from high school and I should have a little more flexibility in my schedule, my ability to go to travel further. Um, so yeah, one day. There's so much of the Western US that I have yet to visit and is so much closer that, you know, that probably will continue to be my priority. Uh, plus, there's just simply a lot of public land available in the West. Um, but I would love to eventually be able to get all the way around the country, for sure. The Average Fisherman 808 says, please catch a fish next... Wait, please catch a fish when camping next to a creek next time. <laughs> I'm just, you know, when I get to these campsites on creeks or rivers, um, I, you know, I, I just don't have, like leisure time. I'm filming, I'm setting up shots, I'm putting up the drone, there's all these different things to do and I've been, usually I've been traveling and filming all day, I've been on my feet, I've been running all day long and you know honestly when I get to camp I'm tired, I'm ready to relax, I do need to do more filming in camp and um, to drop a line into a river or creek is like almost like one more task. And I'm just, I've never been an avid fisherman and I'm not really equipped for it. I mean, I could equip myself, but I'm, I just don't have the, honestly, the, the desire. I, I'm just not super interested in fishing. Um, I'm not, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of eating fish. And so I'm just not super motivated, honestly. I'm really happy just to sit there and watch the creek go by. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Brent Kellner says, do you have a problem keeping your tent material from getting mildew? No, not so far. I mean, you know, I spent, especially this past year since getting the camper, I've had so many rainy trips and the tent gets wet and I have to pack it away wet. But when I come back home, um, I just wait for the next dry day. And sometimes that takes three, four, five days, even a week that I've got it packed away. And then as soon as it looks like, you know, I've got some hours that I can pop it up, I go out there and I pop it up. It dries out and I have not had an issue at all with the, with the tent. Um, you know, I think that the times that I've had it wet and packed it away wet and sat out there wet, it's been pretty cold. And so it's like, you know, Nature's kind of refrigerating it so the mold doesn't grow. And then, you know, when it's warmer here, we're going to move very, very soon into the dry season and it just won't get rained on. And so it'll be warmer, but it's not going to be wet. So it hasn't been an issue for me so far. Okay. Um, Jimmy G says, when is your next big... Oh, well, I'm assuming that says rendezvous. I should know that because I'm... Rendezvous. Rendezvous. Well, that... I mean, I'm not gonna, I won't be oh, doing it. Wait, wait, any... I'm not done with the question. Oh. Don't enter. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I think that's the word. I Rendezvous? Should, yeah, I should, know how, French, to say, I should yes. know how to say that. But with your cousins, that reunion always makes a good video. You guys have such a good time. Um, 
for a few years we were meeting in June and then last year we ended up meeting in September and it may be June, it may be September, um, but sometime in the in the sort of summer-ish months, I'll be meeting up with them again. Yeah, for sure, yeah. Okay, Chris Sanderson says, can a stock SUV do the Washington BDR portions of it? I've never set foot on the Washington BDR, so um, I don't know. There are a lot of videos out there um, of people who have done, you know, various legs of the Washington BDR. So, you know, it depends on the stock SUV. That can be a lot of different things. Um, I would think, you know, as if you've got four wheel drive with low range, that's a good thing. You know, in my opinion, extra ground, extra ground clearance and at least upgraded tires, all-terrain tires that, um, you know, have more sidewall so you can air down and are, um, um, more of a multi-ply tire that's more puncture resistant. Those are all things that you're going to want to do, I think, before getting onto any sort of backcountry routes, in my opinion. Okay, Galactic says, please bring back the Forester, contemplating converting mine to an off-road build inspired by yours. Well, you should definitely convert your Forester. Um, I would love to, I would love to do another Forester build. I mean, if I had unlimited budget, I would go buy another Forester just like I had before and um, you know there's lots of things that I learned in the process of doing that build and some things that I would do the same some things that I would do differently and uh, I would love to build another one but you know I just time and money is you know is not unlimited so but you know maybe one day okay I'm kind of gonna put two questions into okay. one so DK Adventure and Relevant Traveler both are kind of talking about like do you miss the Forester um, they both liked it. And, yeah. 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 So it, there are ways that I miss the Forester for sure. Um, it was, uh, so much easier, uh, on narrow little trails when I needed to turn around, which happens to me often that Forester, I could turn that around any place. I didn't even need a wide spot. I didn't need to pull out. I could turn that car around anywhere. And I really miss that in the Frontier because um, obviously the Frontier is a longer vehicle, but uh, the Frontier specifically has a particularly bad turning radius compared to other trucks of its size, which makes it extra difficult to turn around. Um, that's probably the thing that I miss the most about the Forester. The gas mileage of the Forester was another advantage. Um, in almost every other way, um, I, I've been happier with the Frontier, with the space that I've got in the Frontier, the storage, um, the ride even on pavement, on highways. It's a, it's a nicer, more comfortable ride on the highway when I'm traveling, you know, one, two, three, four hundred miles uh, on pavement to get someplace. And the, there's just no two ways around it, having four-wheel drive, bigger tires, um, and low range just makes it able to go places that the Forester, for as good as it was, would not be able to go. So um, I wouldn't go back. I mean, I'd love to, like I said, I would love to do another Forester, but um, I also would not see myself going back to not having a four wheel drive truck. Lost in MT says, summer plans for you, Lucy, this coming year. Um, I'll probably be mostly just working full time. Um, my boyfriend will be out of state for a job he's doing for the summer, so he won't be here and I'll probably just try to make a ton of money before school since I do so many activities right now, I just don't have time for a full time job. I babysit, but that's not like constant money. So um, yeah, I'll probably work somewhere before school. So super exciting. <laughs> um, Jeff Godsey says, love your videos. Can't wait to see you get back out on the road into the wild again. Me too. Um, DK Adventure says, come down to the Southeast. We can show you around. One day for sure. Um, Cause I got some friends, I got some people down there I need to meet up with too. JR says, I like your channel. Born and raised in Oregon. I love your trip to the Albert Desert. A gold mine is to camp there. Steven Trotter says, do you ever get burned out on editing videos, setting up shots, flying drones, etc.? Um, I really enjoy it. Um, 
I genuinely, genuinely enjoy it. When I'm out on the trail, um, the first half of the day, I'm energetic and I'm super into it. As the afternoon progresses, you know, I get tired and I'm less good about setting up shots. So I would say, I wouldn't say burned out. I would just say over the course of each day that I'm out, you know, as the day wears on, um, you know, sometimes I get a little less um, motivated, I guess, to get out and set up shots and I'm more likely to just hold the GoPro out the window. Um, but, you know, when I, if I, unless I stumble onto just some amazing scenery and then that, you know, sort of perks me up. Um, editing, I don't get burned out on that either because it's a pleasure to go back and revisit those trips. I really enjoy the process of pulling together all the different footage that I've captured and trying to put together a cohesive story for you guys. And um, it, it truly is a pleasure and for the time being, no burnout at all. Okay, we have a hi from New Zealand. Hello, New Zealand. A hi from Michigan. Hello, Michigan. Um, someone said it's their first full year living out of their Kimbo. Oh yeah, Kimbo camper. Yeah. Bird fish. Oh, bird, bird fish. fish. Yeah, I know him. Okay. Yeah, I realize I have not been saying the names. Um. I don't know what this means, but I'm going to read it. Do you ever engage the locker on your frontier? This is Bronco Maniac. Um, I have, I can count on one hand the number of times I've used the locker on the frontier. The frontier has a pretty good, um, like, computer traction control system so that, you know, when you're in this sort of, like, diagonal wheel lift kind of scenario where the open diffs would normally have wheels spinning, the computer actually figures it out most of the time, kind of like the Forester did before. There's been a few situations where I got myself into a spot where um, I just, I had wheels spinning and one time was actually just trying to turn around on a narrow little trail and I got sort of wedged up and I lifted some wheels and the truck just couldn't figure out how to get us out of there. I engaged the locker, drove right out of it. It's very, very rare for the most part. Um, you know, the, the truck in four wheel drive takes care of itself, um, you know, and I'm not, obviously I'm not a hardcore off-roader. I don't get into like super, super gnarly stuff for the most part. And so, you know, I maybe have had fewer opportunities. Um, it's nice to have it there. I'm really glad I have it, um, but I haven't used it very often. Um, I am not saying what university I'm going to. Just don't ask me. <laughs> Um, I don't know. That's still up in the air anyway. Still up in the air, but even if I've yeah. figured it out, that is private information. <laughs> Southwest or SW, Idaho overlanding. George. Do you, do you yep. Know this person? Okay. Hey, George. Says, I told you when you had the Forester that you would eventually want that low range. Dot, dot, dot. Yep. Oh, yeah. The low range is, and you know, I didn't understand it until I'd actually used it for the first time. And it was having never driven a four wheel drive vehicle and shifted into low range in my life. Uh, the first time I did it in the frontier, I mean, my mind was blown. And at that moment, I understood. Okay, where did I go? Okay, Matt says, when are you Titan swapping the truck? Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that I have any need to do that. The current suspension gets me every place that I need to go. The Titan swap is expensive. Um, you know, it looks good. The Frontiers that are Titan swapped look good, um, but I'm not convinced that I need it. And I've been super happy with the, the clearance that I have and the ride that I have, the ride on this suspension with the Coney's and the All Dogs um, parabolic rear leaf springs, um, it's it's just fantastic. And I don't feel like I'm missing anything at the moment. So for the moment, that's not even on the radar. Jimmy G says, do you ever think about getting a Jeep Wrangler or Gladiator? Um, no, I mean, I, I've got the Frontier, it works great. Um, there's a ton of other Jeeps on YouTube already. YouTube doesn't need another guy out there in a Jeep. Part of me 
it feels like I'd like to experience owning a Wrangler and having that solid front axle and just having that sort of experience. And I, I would say that that could happen one day. I don't think it would ever be like my primary vehicle um, because I just, I enjoy the camping setup that I have too much. Um, but I would like to experience having a, a Jeep Wrangler, even if it's just for, you know, a year. That used to be the vehicle I wanted. Yeah. I used to be obsessed with the Jeeps, but not so much anymore. Now you want a Forester, right? No, mm, 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 I don't <laughs> want a Subaru. <sighs> Sorry. Well, I, I tried I, to get her into a Subaru, but... I kind of like the Subaru BRZs, but if I was going to get a BRZ, then I would just get the Mazda FRS, because I don't Mazda. want a Subaru. Isn't it Mazda? Is it Toyota? It's Toyota. No, it's Mazda. FRS? Yeah. Isn't Mazda owned is by Toyota? No. No? Oh. It's Subaru is owned by Toyota. I'm getting things mixed up yeah. here. Wait, no, it's a, it's a is Scion owned by. I don't think Scion is owned by Toyota. I don't think it has this. This is, let's move on. Anyways. Toyota has a car that's basically the same as the BRZ. It's not Mazda. Oh, I thought it was a. Yeah. Okay, I got the logos mixed up. But yeah, I don't want the Subaru one. Anyways, someone said, wait, I have a key sending someone. Mr. Get Outside, do you know this person? Just says, mm, sorry you had trouble on your Colorado trip. I enjoyed that you found some of the less popular areas and the places I like to go when the popular spots are busy. Yeah, I mean, I was really, I was really disappointed. <laughs> Um, in Colorado, when I got up into the mountains and it didn't work out, um, I had been so, so looking forward to that trip and I did so much research and I just, I can't believe in all of my research that I didn't know, there were no warnings. I didn't run into any warnings about altitude sickness, but what an amazing state Colorado is because, you know, just flying by the seat of my pants, I found other things to do and it was all amazing and beautiful and I look forward to getting back to Colorado one day, including getting up into those mountains. DK Adventure says, any tips for beginners starting out with the Camping Overlanding YouTube channel? Um, I would, I would say, you know, there's a lot of people doing that, so any way you can differentiate yourself, um, and also, I would say, be yourself. Don't try and do what you see other people doing. Just do what makes sense to you. Tell your stories the way it makes sense for you to tell them. And, you know, if you're genuine, then you will connect with people. People will connect with you. And that would be my, that would be my advice. Um, we have a hi from Canada. Hello, Canada. Philip W. says, nah, you don't need a Wrangler. They break down. Your wagon is great. Yeah, I still think it would be fun. I mean, I feel like it's hard to say anything good or bad about Jeep Wranglers if I haven't actually experienced it myself. So I'd like to experience it so that I can say, you know, so I can compare. Bronco Maniac says, how many miles have you put on the Frontier since you bought it? Let's see, it was at uh, 73,000 miles when I bought it and um, oh, I was just working on my mileage for my taxes actually and it's up to 100 and, oh, I've got it right here, I've got it right here. Not prepared. I'm at about 114,000, so what's that? About 40,000 miles. About 40,000 miles since I got it in, um, what was it, April of 2021. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Uh, let's see. What's your go to camping meal? My go to what? Camping meal. Oh, um, well, a can of chili, a can of steak chili. That's definitely by far. What I do the most um, after that, probably a, a steak with some vegetables of some sort. And then um, after that, a quesadilla of some sort is also a favorite camping dish that's um, easy and hot and satisfying. 
I think you already answered this earlier, but this person might have not been here. But Red Sand Adventures says, ever think of visiting Canada? Canada, yeah, yeah, one day for sure, yeah. I'll definitely get up there. As I mentioned earlier, um, currently my passport is expired, I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, I still have a lot of the Western US that I have yet to explore, but, um, you know, Canada one day for sure. There's some beautiful places I've seen up there. Birdfish says, when are you getting a one wheel? Nope, not, nope, nope, not gonna do it. A one wheel? You know that, that little sort of like one wheeled skateboard thing? Oh. A one wheel, yeah. And I've, I've, I've ridden them, but you know what? I'm, that's, that's not my generation. <laughs> I don't think, uh, it's yeah. It's not mine either. It's like in between. It's in between, it's like yeah. like millennial. Yeah. Um, anyways. JR says, are you going to fix the body damage on the passenger side? Is there damage on the passenger side? Yeah, they did it in Utah in 2022. That's been, we're going on two years on that. No, it's, um, you know, if I, I've got other things I could do with the money that would cost to fix that up. And um, I could simply, I could go out the next day and make the same kind of mistake and bash it all up again. It's just not worth it. Um, I look at those dents on the side of the truck and it reminds me of that amazing trip that I had in Utah. It's a souvenir and... It's like Toe Mater from Cars. It's like Toe Mater from Cars. Um, Reference. Yeah. No, that's that's going to stay the way it is. Okay. Philip W. says, what wild animals have you encountered on your camps? Um, I have seen... Well, I have seen... Mostly um, squirrels, <laughs> chipmunks, lots of different kinds of birds. I've seen a cougar. Uh, I've seen, I've caught quick glimpses of cougar, um, but Did not actually in camp. I've seen a bear while driving down the road, but not actually in camp. Um, cougar and bear, they, any times that I've seen them, all they want to do is get away from me. I've never felt threatened by any of them. We um, encountered a juvenile rattlesnake in my cousin's camp a couple of years ago. I didn't actually see it, my cousin saw it. Um, I have literally never in my life laid eyes on a rattlesnake, um, even though they're apparently very common in Oregon. I've never seen one. Um, uh, I've seen a badger one time. And uh, what do I normally see? Well, deer, elk. Um, probably see a ton of birds. Ton of birds, yeah. Bats. bats, yeah. I don't see bats too too much. Um, yeah. Owls. I guess I know. Birds. Yeah, but I know I never see them. You're the one who always spots the owls. Well, yeah, I remember reason. that time we were driving, and I was like, "That's a great horned owl," and then yeah. it flew away before you got to see it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So nothing super, super like dramatic. Oh, um, um, pronghorn, antelope. I mean, they're not, oh. they're technically not antelope, but pronghorn, um, often called antelope. Um, those are, if you get a chance to see those, especially if you see a big herd of them running out across the desert, that is a sight to see. They are also super, super spooky. They try and get away from you. Um, elk also, for how massive they are, they just want to get away from you. Deer are the the ones that are like the least afraid of anything. It seems like, um, and probably what I see the most. Black Shadow says, "I love your DIY videos." Um, TJ Kruger says, "Ever consider painting your truck in bed liner similar to Jason's? Diff cover, diff color, obviously, but camo would be a great troll." Um. Yeah, I mean, I, that's definitely crossed my mind just to have the resistance to the, all the pinstriping. But, um, you know, that's, I mean, that's some thousands of dollars and ultimately for appearances, it's just, it, it's not worth it to me to, I don't have the budget for that just to make the truck look better. Um, so for the moment, uh, pinstripes it is. <laughs> I think it should be hot pink. No, you don't. I don't even know what you you're would, talking about. You would be embarrassed. I don't even know what you're talking about. Oh. 
I just heard paint and color and said yes. hot pink. Uh, M.T. Lassen says, where would you like to go that you haven't been? And where would you like to go that you have been? Like, go again. Yeah, gotcha. So where I haven't been, um, probably like Southern Arizona um, is high on my radar. There's actually a bunch of places in California that I haven't been. Um, but honestly, I'm when I go into California, the gas prices are just so painful that um, I find myself leaning towards some of the other Western states. Um, I would, uh, in Idaho actually, I would love to spend some time in Idaho. There's some beautiful, beautiful country in Idaho. Um, places that I have been that I wanna get back to, um, definitely Utah. Utah has been my favorite place outside of Oregon that I've been and I am currently tentatively planning uh, another Utah trip this year. Um, just because I loved it so much and uh, I can't wait to get back there. JR says, what brand of drone do you use? Um, DJI, I don't know if anyone doesn't use DJI. I mean, there's the, the Skydio drones were kind of interesting for a while, but they have stopped producing like consumer drones. Um, uh, yeah, I run a DJI Mavic 2 Pro and I love it. It works great. OTB says, Lucy is a nice addition. Seems like I haven't been on here for a while. That's true. I'm busy. She's busy. I, I just, yeah. Senior in high school, which actually is not a very good excuse because I do absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, but then I have flag football practice and games during the week, and I also have dance at night. Um, so... I'm busy, and, and when I have free time, then I'm with friends or with my boyfriend, so. Yeah, yeah. busy, it's been a yeah. busy year. Dance yeah. competitions also. Dance competitions, also. yeah, which take up weekends, and yeah, a lot of stuff, shows, games, busy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, now that I'm getting out of high school, and since I won't be doing that much this summer, you might see me a bit more. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, someone says, hello, Midnight Adventure says hello from washington looking forward to see you at pnw expo this year um and yeah don't see you there brian last year you were riding that one wheel with jason <laughs> i was trying um chris sanderson says how many hours does it take to edit a 20 minute video um it depends on the type of video the like the uh 20 minute garage video goes faster than a 20 minute adventure video where i'm pulling together, you know, drone footage and um, footage from various different cameras. Um, and the adventure episodes, um, I can easily spend anywhere from 20 to 30 hours, actually. By the time I get everything downloaded and edited together and look for music, get the music edited in, and then there's audio work that I do, and then there's color grading that I do, and then, you know, there's a thumb, there's all these steps, um, easily 20 to 30 hours on a, a typical adventure episode, less on the garage videos. The video says, love your adventure videos because they focus on scenery and history, little focus on a camp. Great. Um, oh. Yeah, that goes both ways because some people complain when I don't use, when I don't include enough like camp footage. Um, so it just kind of depends on what happens and what I find on a given day. Christopher Smith says, did Lucy ever get a dog? No, but I have a very amazing cat. Should I go get him? Where is he? It's in my room. Oh yeah, should I go get Charlie. Okay, yeah. here you go. Give me a, mm. what? Well, I was gonna say, give me a question that I can give answer Give you a first. question? Oh, here. Um, any plans for another trip with your brother and friends? You don't have a brother. Learn. Um, my <laughs> my cousins i have i don't have a brother um i have two sisters and but i have a cousin who i grew up with who's like a brother to me and he and i and a number of my other cousins we meet up each year and yeah that would be the plan again this year to meet up someplace possibly again in washington this year and um sometimes 
Sometimes one of my cousins travels with me. Here's the dog. Here's the dog. The, the dog. This, this is, is Charlie. He's my child. How old is he now? He's about a year and a half. Year and a half. Yeah. Yeah. He's Can't a, quite see him there. He's a funny. Boy. Well, he's. <laughs> he just wants to sleep. <laughs> he, you can see his little head. You can see his little head. Yeah. That's the dog. That's as close as we're gonna get. Yeah. We are cat people. Um, Scott Minshall says go to Wyoming. It's phenomenal. Yeah, one day for sure. Yeah, it's a long ways. It's a long ways from Oregon, but one day. Sam Smith says love the channel from Washington. Thanks, Sam. Uh, TJ Kruger says, do you ever do any long exposure in night sky or a? astro photography on your trips yeah um i used to fiddle with it a little bit um currently i no longer even own a like real photography camera i've sort of cycled through a number of different types of cameras over the past couple years and um i'm now shooting with a dedicated video camera and no longer have a, a photography camera. I used to fiddle with a little bit, but I feel like there's so many people who are serious photographers who go out and do those, that sort of astrophotography that, you know, they're taking pictures of the same stars as me and it kind of feels pointless because it feels like it's kind of been done. And when I've been out traveling and filming all day long in the evening, I'm tired <laughs> and I'm not super motivated to fiddle around with a camera anymore after dark, um, make some dinner, film a little camp footage, and um, then relax for the evening. So, not so much. Just an FYI, I have about 10-ish minutes left. Okay, yeah, we got about 10 minutes to go, and then yeah. we have to wrap this up. Um, Renee Parker says, I'm a cat person. Charlie reminds me of a few cats I've had. Um, Trick Shop 1100 says, I'm getting a Garmin 8-inch Tread Overland. What is your dash mounting system? Um, I'm using all RAM mount gear. Um, I've used to experiment with various inexpensive things that I found on Amazon. Finally gave up, spent the money on the RAM mount gear. I have not, it's been 100% worth it. Um, I've reconfigured it a few times over the years, but I keep reusing the same components. Sometimes, you know, buying a new component here or there. Um, it's just solid, it holds up, it's very versatile. And if you go to the Ram Mount website um, and just browse through all their components, you can put together just whatever you need for your specific um, scenario. And it's, to me, it's, that's been 100% worth it. Chris Sanderson says, wow, with this emoji. <laughs> a lot of hours. Thanks for sharing your adventures. Some of the best I've seen on YouTube. Thank you. Chris Sludge says, I really enjoy your videos, especially the ones with Primal Outdoors. The banter back and forth is great. Brent Kellner says, did you have a prior video experience before starting your channel? No, this whole thing was um, an accident. I <laughs> hate did not mean to start a YouTube channel. Um, I had no experience or desire to create videos. Um, it's sort of a long story, but I parked some videos of the Forester on YouTube just because I needed like a web host for some video content. They started getting views and I started trying to make them a little bit better and found that I was enjoying it. Um, but no, no prior experience with video at all. Um, that's just, I've had to just learn as I go. But it's been fun, I've been enjoying it, yeah. Or I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be doing it otherwise. Stretch says, I have a dog like that. <laughs> We're gonna start considering him a dog. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna answer this. Chris Miller says, hope to running into you at the PNW Expo. He will be there. Um, just tuning in, oh wait, Nick Bailey says, just tuning in, sorry if you addressed this already, but I'm looking into a new suspension for my Xterra, 
and wondering how you like your all dog all dogs off road setup. Yeah, I mean, I talked about that a little bit earlier, um, but it's been fantastic. Someone asked me you know, when I was going to Titan swap the Frontier, and I said, you know, I'm so happy with the setup that I have now with the Coney's and all dogs, um, you know, springs that they make themselves. That I, I it's just been the truck is I'm super happy with it as it is. Um, yeah. And whether or not you got that setup or something else, um, I would talk to all dogs because they know Nissans and they can talk to you about how you're using your Xterra and what makes the most sense for you. Um, one zero two three George B says, love the cooking sessions and the outtakes. Also glad to see you use real cookware. Oh yeah. Philip W says, when is Lucy venturing out again? As I said earlier, maybe this summer. Just wait and see. Um, Scott Minchel says, thanks Lucy for moderating your dad. Helps get a lot of information covered. Just, just a day's work. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Have you ever or would you ever meet up with the with Tristan from SUV RV Inc. I would love to. Uh, I Tristan was one of the first YouTube channels that I started following when I discovered YouTube as a source of entertainment and not just a source of you know how to fix things. Um, and I've I've talked to Tristan on Instagram a couple of times um, over the years. Um, yeah, I'm a huge fan of his channel. He's one of the few channels that I actually still watch and follow every week. And, um, you know, if we got the opportunity to cross paths, you know, I would be just the starry eyed fanboy, honestly. Um, but yeah, if, if, if it happened, I would, I would totally be open to that. Um, Jason Neal says all dogs also knows Sequoias as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean they're they're they go beyond Nissan for sure. Yeah. Stretch says now you must remember to pick up a bottle of Pinot Noir on your way out of town. Sounds good to me. Sean Bates, good evening from Plymouth. 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 I've never been there. I don't know. Um, I mean, it's also a car, but it is. Plymouth. Yeah, I mean, you guess they don't make Plymouth anymore. Yeah, Plymouth. <laughs> really enjoy your videos. Your recommendations have influenced my frontier. The Asphir? Asphir? Asphir skids have been fantastic. Good. I know you're not rock crawling, but ever consider slight... Well, I don't know if this is... Sliders? Because he, like, it's, like, two different... I don't know mm -hmm. if it's supposed to continue, mm -hmm. so I'm assuming it is, but ever consider sliders, as here on the East Coast, rocks and roots are plentiful, even I'm in class full loads. Yeah, I mean, I haven't, like, had the truck in a situation where sliders would make a difference. I feel like it wouldn't hurt to do it, but it's not been a high priority just because it doesn't seem to be the kind of thing that I run into a lot. Um, you know, I feel like at some point um, it would be a possibly a fun and fairly straightforward um, DIY project to do with the welder one day. How are we doing on time? Because we must be getting... Like three, five minutes. About oh, five minutes. Just a few more minutes here. Yeah. Um, we have a hello from Vancouver, Washington, brother. Okay. Yeah. Hello. I waved. Yeah. I said hello. That's, okay. that's it. That's it. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, then I think we're going to wrap this up. Lucy has to go. If um, you're watching this later and you had a question that you wanted to ask and, I, and it wasn't asked and answered, um, once this video sort of shows up on the channel, you can post comments um, on the video and I will read back through and answer anything that, um, you know, that you, that you post that I didn't get answered. Yeah, one so, just came in, so. What's that? One just came in. One just came in. Yeah. Do you want to answer it now? We sure, just... we can okay. hit it real quick. How are you enjoying the 270 awning? Your latest video makes me think that, wait, makes me think it's my next purchase. Love the channel. Looking forward to see your next adventure. Yeah, 270. I mean, I, um, it's the kind of thing that I probably initially would have thought that 
I wouldn't want to spend the money on that, but after having been out on a few trips with people who had 270 awnings and taking advantage of that shelter myself made me realize, oh man, this is really nice to have, especially considering how often I end up out in the rain um, and also how much I don't like being in the sun. So um, year round, it's a great thing to have. Um, and to me, it was, was something that definitely ultimately became something that I felt was worth spending money on. Okay, we'll cut it off there. Uh, if you have any further questions, post them uh, in the comments below. Um, thank you all for tuning in and thank you all for watching and supporting the channel. Really appreciate it. Uh, wouldn't be able to do all of this without all of you uh, watching the videos. So thank you so much and uh, back to the adventures very soon. Bye-bye. Peace. Now's the awkward now's part the awkward where I have to reach to out and off, stop and the live stream. You can never like touch it and you're like constantly, Where's it's the up button? in the corner. There we go. Bye-bye. <laughs>